William Shakespeare has been dead for hundreds of years. In faith, I do not love thee with mine eyes, for then thee a thousand errors know. But his stories live on, even if you don't immediately recognize them. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that borrowed from Shakespeare plays. For this list, we're looking at those films that borrowed from Shakespearean plays, but are not literal adaptations of his work. So you won't be seeing a young Leonardo DiCaprio running around Verona Beach on this list. Villain am I not? Therefore, farewell. Number 10, The Bad Sleep Well, based on Hamlet. Kimi. You will hear the name Akira Kurosawa several times on this list, as the famed Japanese filmmaker practically made a career of adapting the works of Shakespeare for Japanese audiences. One such film was The Bad Sleep Well, loosely based on the classic tale of murder and revenge, Hamlet. The story setting moves from Denmark to post-war Tokyo, and its characters morph from kings and noblemen into corporate tycoons. With the plot revolving around a young man who wishes to expose those responsible for his father's death, there are several stand-ins for notable characters from the play. But unfortunately, the ending for our protagonist remains the same. <laughs> Number 9, Throne of Blood, based on Macbeth. <laughs> from one Kurosawa film to another, Throne of Blood takes its inspiration from the Shakespearean classic Macbeth. <laughs> In this case, Scotland becomes Japan, although the feudal setting remains in both, and Shakespeare's three witches become one fortune-telling spirit, who predicts that Washizu is destined for greatness as Lord of Spiderweb Castle. There are obvious parallels between Throne of Blood and Macbeth, from the scene where Lady Washizu attempts to wash imaginary blood from her hands, to the classic image of trees marching on the castle. Making this one of Kurosawa's more bold and tragic Shakespeare adaptations. Number 8, Kiss Me Kate, based on The Taming of the Shrew. If faith, the woman shot her bull. She has performed while I did act the dolt. We always thought Shakespeare could use more tunes, and the legendary Cole Porter obliged when he penned this Broadway musical, which was then turned into a Hollywood film. Brush up your Shakespeare, and the women you will wow. The connection between Kiss Me Kate and The Taming of the Shrew is more direct in this film. We see a production company attempting to perform the Shrew stage show. Paralleling the on-stage story, however, is the behind-the-scenes drama, which itself is basically an adaptation of the play. Could have been your disposition. It might have been your ego. With Fred and Lily standing in for Petruchio and Catherine, the film version adds in some slapstick comedy and several big musical numbers to tell its battle of the sexes. But why can't you behave? Number seven. Strange Brew, based on Hamlet. Zoom in on this. Okay, here's how to get a free beer, eh? Get a baby mouse and, like, put it in a bottle. A film about a couple of drunken Canadians starring Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis is loosely based on Hamlet? As ridiculous as that sounds, it's actually true. It's in the Canadian criminal code, eh? Yeah. Like, there's legal precedent setting cases in law. So, like, uh, give us our free beer. The beer-loving twosome stumbles upon an evil plot that sees a brewery owner murdered by his own brother and an evil brewmeister, with the brother then marrying his dead brother's wife. You stinking hypocrite. You murdered your own brother. You had the stomach for that. To tie it to Hamlet even more, the brewery owner appears as a ghost to his daughter. And to top it all off, the brewery is named Elsinore, which is the setting of Shakespeare's play. Real big, eh? Yeah. Of course, the film also features tainted beer, mind control, and hockey. <laughs> Hence why we said loosely based. No scientific explanation for it. So it's pointless to worry. Number six, My Own Private Idaho, based on Henry IV. This is my road. 
looks like a f***ed up face. Keanu Reeves and River Phoenix may not be the first actors that come to mind when casting a Shakespeare adaptation. But once again, we aren't looking for literal adaptations. My Own Private Idaho stars Reeves and Phoenix as two gay hustlers drifting through the American Northwest. Of course, if the guy can pay me, then hell yeah. Here I am for it. I'll sell my ass. Though he didn't start out writing an adaptation, director and writer Gus Van Sant borrowed significantly from Shakespeare's Henry plays, most notably Henry IV and wrote the character of Scott Favor as a modern reworking of Prince Harry, a man who shuns responsibility as he waits for his inevitable inheritance. When I was young and you were my street tutor, an instigator for my bad behavior, I was planning a change. There was a time when I had the need to learn from you. Bob Pigeon stands in for fatherly figure Falstaff and is similarly slighted by his adopted family in the end. I'm afraid if I shared your wine, I might catch this awful disease you appear to have. Number five, 10 things I hate about you, based on The Taming of the Shrew. You're gonna pay me to take out some chick. Mm -hmm. One of the better known adaptations of a Shakespearean play, this film showcases several up and coming actors, including Heath Ledger, I love you, baby. Julia Stiles, and Joseph Gordon Levitt. But that was until she kissed me. While it may seem like another ridiculous 90s high school movie, the film is basically an exact version of The Taming of the Shrew. Ledger needs to woo Styles so her sister can date, as she is not allowed to start seeing boys until the stubborn Styles does. But she's a mutant! What if she never dates? Then you'll never date. Oh, I like that. Wait a second. Did Will Shakespeare basically pave the way for high school angst comedy? Thus the basis of its appeal. Either way, with the identical plot and even character names that are nods to Shakespearean names and places, this is a clever and well thought out reworking. I know Shakespeare's a dead white guy, but he knows his shit, so we can overlook that. Number four, Forbidden Planet, based on The Tempest. Look at the color of that sky. Yeah, but I'll still take blue. I don't know. I think a man could get used to this. So far, we've seen settings of classic Shakespearean plays change to Tokyo, Canada, and an American high school. But what about outer space? Attention, Captain and crew, now hear this. We are now entering the atmosphere of Altair IV. Considered one of the best science fiction films of the 1950s, Forbidden Planet follows a father and daughter who are stranded on a remote planet and are eventually discovered by a group of sailors, near astronauts. Well, gentlemen, if I can be of any help to you in your preparations for the homeward voyage. Oh, thank you, sir, but unfortunately, uh, circumstances may keep us here for a while. A love story unfolds, as does the chronicle of a man who's able to control the elements. These gentlemen have expressed a very kindly concern over the amount of liberty you have here. Liberty? I've explained to them that you have my permission to visit Earth whenever you choose. Essentially, until a drastic change at the end, the plot mimics that of The Tempest, proving that Shakespeare is universally great. Literally. You're too arbitrary, Commander. Perhaps I do not choose to be dictated to in my own world. Dr. Morbius, a scientific find of this magnitude has got to be taken under United Planet supervision. No one man can be allowed to monopolize it. Number three, Ron, based on King Lear. <laughs> As we've already learned, Akira Kurosawa clearly respected classic English literature. The third Kurosawa film to make our list, Ron is essentially a reworking of King Lear. Once again, with Japan as its backdrop, the story tracks an aging warlord as he decides to abdicate in favor of his three sons. Anyone with knowledge of the play knows that things go downhill from there, with the sons competing for supremacy. <laughs> with obviously shared themes and allusions between the play and the film, Ron does not end on a high note, although it did prove to be an appropriate end to a career as the last epic on Akira Kurosawa's resume. Number two, West Side Story, based on Romeo and Juliet. It seems like borrowing the plot from a classic Shakespeare play and adding in catchy show tunes is a recipe for success. In West Side Story, the story of two star-crossed lovers destined to be separated is a tale of two groups divided by race. Instead of Verona, we get New York City's Upper West Side. 
instead of the Montagues and Capulets, we get the Sharks and Jets. Instead of a balcony, we get a fire escape. There is one more significant change, however. Where Juliet meets her end along with her love, Maria survives. But forcing her to live out her days without the love of her life is just as tragic as the original ending. How many can I kill, Chino? How many? I still have one bullet left for me. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Oh, right. Oh! Oh, for the love of God! Number one, The Lion King, based on Hamlet. You are my son. Most of you probably already know by now that The Lion King is loosely based on Hamlet. Scar kills his brother Mufasa Long live the king. while making it look like an accident, and essentially banishes Mufasa's son Simba in order to secure the throne. No one ever means for these things to happen. While these three characters clearly represent Hamlet's father, Claudius, and Hamlet himself, we also get the inclusion of the sidekicks, Timon and Pumbaa, who are based on Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. You gotta put your past behind you. Of course, as it's Disney, the good guys win, and only the evil characters die at the end. Which is only a slight change from the blood-soaked conclusion of Shakespeare's classic tragedy. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite Shakespearean adaptation? Yeah, like I said before, Mr. Graham, going away is such sweet sorrow. For more great top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Happy trails. See ya. Bye now.